This thing is close. Uh, it's so close. Picking up from last week, I'm gonna detail how I made the shims that I need at the base of my baggage ribs, where I have wound up with a small gap. I believe the gap is somewhat related to the conical bend on the exterior of the airplane. I'm not entirely sure, but I think I could have made it a little tighter, and as a result of it being just a hair high, I have a little bit of space at the base of this rib. I started with masking tape and applied it to the tab where I need the spacer. Cutting this around the perimeter of the tab uh, very carefully, I was able to get an exact replica of the piece I need, including the two holes with their placement. I placed this on some 063 aluminum and cut it out on the bandsaw. Couple quick clicks with the center punch tool and I got the start to the holes that I need and then I go ahead and drill those holes with a number 40 drill bit. Once the holes are drilled, I'm going to take the part and uh, round over the corners with a file. This is doing some of the detail work that I wasn't able to do on the bandsaw. From there, I have an exact match of the part or the tab of the baggage rib with one exception. I need to dimple some holes. So we go ahead and dimple it and then the piece is perfect. So now we have a little spacer that just fits perfect and takes up some of that gap between the two pieces. What we'll do is we'll use a bit longer of a rivet, but otherwise everything else fits perfect. So I'm not too worried about the inclusion of the spacer. Go get it clicked on the airplane. And when my helper comes back, we'll rivet it on. And there's certainly no shortage of riveting left on this thing. While I'm alone, I'm riveting every chance I get, every rivet I can possibly reach, contorting every which way. I could probably use a stool. Um, and just trying to get everything done so that when I do have someone come and help, we can focus on those that are somewhat out of reach. Uh, the goal here, get all of the rivets I can possibly get and that I need to get to turn this thing over. It's getting close. A lot of the riveting, most of the riveting is done. Most of the riveting that I can do is done, uh, which is an exciting thing to say. Um, and it's, it's actually been really fun to go through this. A little tedious at points, but for the most part, fun. So what am I doing now? Um, I need to seal the firewall from the rest of the cabin. The idea being, if I wind up with an engine fire, we don't want noxious gases, smoke, and fumes. Uh, to enter the cabin. We also don't want carbon monoxide to enter the cabin in the event of a non-fire or just general operation. So how do we do that? Well, we use a fire sealant, but not just any fire sealant. Um, I took a look online and there are some do's and don'ts. First of all, uh, a don't is, from what I read, don't use tank sealant. Um, and there is some old language out there, I think in plans and instructions to use tank sealant, either on the rivets themselves or on the seal between the skin and the firewall. This is not good. Tank sealant is not fireproof. Tank sealant is flammable and creates a lot of black smoke. We definitely don't want to add to the engine fire, uh, eventual engine, no, possible engine fire. <coughs> the possible uh, engine fire in the future. We don't use tank sealant on the, the gap here. So what did I get? I got um, a 3M product. It's Fire Barrier 2000 plus. Um, this comes highly recommended. Now, there is 3M Fire Barrier uh, products that are not the 2000 plus, uh, and they don't come as highly recommended. Now, I read spec sheets. I tried to figure out in layperson lay terms what the difference is so I could share it here, um, and I could not. Uh, but uh, from what I read, this is the one you want. 
that this does not come from your Home Depot. The one that comes from your Home Depot or other hardware store is not the one you want. If you're scared that you're getting the wrong one, do what I did, head over to Aircraft Spruce, uh, get it from them. Uh, I took that as a sign that we're, we're using the right stuff if they're selling it. Um, so with that, I'm gonna put a bead on this, much like I did the fuel tank sealant, try and get a nice even coat, and then I'm gonna Clico from head to toe on this thing, um, not riveting yet because we have some additional uh, fixtures that need to go on the inside for fastening the cowl, um, but with it sealed, I will then feel confident to finish the rivets from here forward that I've left open so I can peel the skin back. Let's get started. So here is why I've left the front of this uh, as of yet unriveted. It's so I can still get in here. Um, now, as you remember, I removed all of the primer from this skin. Uh, I'm going to quickly scuff up this skin and then I'm going to wipe both down with some alcohol, let it flash off, and then we'll put our bead of silicone uh, fire sealant in here. to squeeze out on the back side that's what we're going to see this stuff is sealed it's looking good now all i have left to do is uh, a few lines of rivets uh, up here in the front that i couldn't do because i needed to peel the skins back once those are done i can close up the, the top which is the bottom right and uh, finish off the rivets on the bottom forward skin and then we're going to put this thing in Riveting on the forward bottom skin is pretty straightforward and with a helper I was able to wipe it out in a long afternoon. The only difference here is there are several rivets that need to be set double flush. We've talked about these throughout the build um, and there are several on each side of the aircraft uh, that make way for the landing gear mounts. In order to set these double flush you'll need to countersink the center spar flange and in order to countersink the center spar flange I had to get pretty creative with my drill attachments uh, because access here is very limited.
primarily complete. Uh, I say primarily because I have this strip along the side, on each side, that still needs to be hit. Uh, I also have not riveted the very leading edge of the skins to the firewall because we have the cowl attachment methods and, and I'm still not quite sure on how I want to approach that. So for now, I'm just going to leave it with a string of Clicos. However, I think the time is right to finally flip this thing. Uh, I've got some help on the way. I've got it lowered um, and I've got sort of a mental plan in place. We'll talk it through with the folks that are going to help me. But I think we're at a point where it just makes sense to go ahead and flip it upright. So we're going to try. Lifting it and well, walking. you're going to be on the end, and the end is really light. I'm strong. I know you are. But we're going to give you the easy job. Okay. The end is really light. Uh -huh. It's going to roll, and you're just going to support it up above the sawhorses as we roll this up there. Sawhorses? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's not get stuck on that part of it. All right. We're gonna roll it this way, towards Tyler. Okay, ready? Jesus! This is light. Maybe strong. Nylon. No. Run. Down. There it is. Holy cow. Wow, guys. Looks like an airplane now. <laughs> <gasps> it's done! How cool! <laughs> Woohoo! This is cool. That's it for this week. Short, sweet, to the point. But we got it done. Now, believe it or not, there are a couple things we have to do before we take to the skies. Quite a few, actually. And I'm going to have those up on this channel soon. In the meantime, please like if you do, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll talk to you next time on Ryan Flies.